In this video, I will be teaching you how to create step-by-step -step banger carousels like the one you're seeing on screen right now. Let's go! For my carousel creation, I usually utilize Photoshop, but you can use platforms such as Canva, Illustrator, Figma, and many, many more. It doesn't really matter, the process is the same. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the video. And if you enjoyed it and you would like to see more content such as this one, like this video. Okay, so let's get started on the carousel creation process. Step number one is creating your document and utilizing the right settings. So let's dive straight onto my computer and do that. For carousels, we obviously need more space. So in this case, I put the width at 10,800 and the height needs to be 1350. That way we are making use of the most real estate we are given on the Instagram feed. So once we have done that, we can actually create our document. It doesn't matter what your resolution is as Instagram is compressing those files either way. So this is all the settings that you need to be making in this menu. Click create and you have your document. Then the next step is to actually go into the slice to right click, promote to user slice. Then again, right click, divide slice, divide vertically into and then type 10. This way you basically have 10 pieces which you can utilize for your carousel. When you divide your carousels in this way, later on when we go to the saving options, this will save our carousel into 10 different posts which you can combine in a single document for platforms such as let's say LinkedIn and you can post on Instagram utilizing scheduling tools such as Creator Studio or even manually by selecting the 10 different posts. Now, after we have sliced our document, we also want to make sure we are following the right margins for carousels in specifically with our size, which is 1315 in height. We want to make sure we leave 135 pixels from the top and 135 pixels from the bottom. That way, any elements which are in these 135 top pixels and these 135 bottom pixels won't be seen on the actual homepage. They will still be seen in the feed, so you can still place elements such as, let's say, your logo, progress bar, call to actions and whatnot, but on your own profile, they won't be seen. So these are the horizontal margins that we have to put. Now in terms of vertical margins, I usually leave 50 pixels from the side in order to make sure that there is enough white space in my designs. And again, this is something which we have to do for every single slide, leave 50 pixels from each side of the slice. And again, we can replicate this and we can do this manually for the rest as well. Now, after we have created our guides as well as our slices, it's super important to move forward into the actual carousel creation process. What I usually do with my carousels is I break them down into two main segments. I break them down into the visuals which I'm going to be utilizing as well as in the copy that I'm going to be utilizing. And the easiest thing for me to do is actually first put all of my text into my carousel and then create the visuals around that. So the next step that we have to do is create new layer, click on the T icon and then start typing your text. The fonts that I'm utilizing myself are BW straight for my headlines. I utilize the black version, all caps. This is my headline and for my budget, copy, I utilize Helvetica. Again, my, my font choices are pretty safe. I, I don't do anything fancy, but this is what works for me. This is what has helped me keep everything super legible on my feet. At the same time, my covers grab attention and translate that attention into engagement. So again, BW Stretch, this is the font which I am utilizing for my headlines. Let's create a headline right now. I left the line everything. I break it down into a couple of lines and that's my headline. Another thing which you can play around with is the amount of space between the lines. I usually go for tighter copy because usually my courses are packed with a lot of value. So I cannot afford to have that much space. Usually the sizes which I'm utilizing 
for the majority of budget decks, which is outside of the main value pack slide, is 85, Hicks 90 for the line spacing. And in terms of the headlines, it differs a lot, but at least 150 pixels in size. And then for the line spaces with the font which I'm utilizing BW Stretch, usually the size of the line spacing is the same as the size of the actual font. So in my case 150 is the size of the font and the size of the line spacing is 150 as well. Let us just fill our whole cars over the text and go back to the visuals afterwards. So after we have placed all of our text, the next step that we need to take is actually to visually design the whole carousel. Now this really depends on what is your brand guide. I personally prefer going for darker colors. My color scheme is red and dark gray. So I am going to be inputting my color scheme into the background with some textures as well as inputting the colors of my fonts in order to match my color scheme as well. And again, this is the next step. As we've discussed, carousels come down to visuals and copy. So we have created, we have finished our copy. Now let's dive into our visuals. In this case, I will be utilizing simple visuals, but usually I get my images either from Prepaid or from Adobe Stock. Now, as mentioned, right now I'm going to go simple. Another thing that I do for my carousels in order to just make them pop a tad bit more, especially in the font section, is that I actually add another texture on top of my fonts. So let's quickly do that. Let me go get that texture. These textures are really easy to find by if you go on Prepaid and you type concrete textures you can definitely find a lot of them this is my font headline without texture and this is my font headline with texture and of course you can increase the opacity make this even more relevant i like to keep it anywhere between 30 and 50 in this case let's keep it at 45 percent and this is our finished headline now after we have the background and we have the fonts it is already starting to look a lot better. The next step is, of course, finding some relevant images for our carousels. So for this video in which we are covering all about how to create carousels, I deem that the most appropriate visuals would be carousel related visuals. So I just downloaded one carousel from Freepik. Again, that's a great resource. Let's see how we can size it up so it is still visible, it is still impactful, but at the same time, the headline is legible. Now I can change it to overlay. I can create multiple versions of that overlay effect. I can also place a black and white. That way our headline has even more priority. I can resize the image, rotate it, and make sure that it fits my headline perfectly. On top of that, in order to make it merge with the rest of my carousel, I can utilize a gradient effect and just soften up the edges to the point in which it is completely merged with my carousel. And then if I have any other effects, and then if there are any other spots which are left unmerged, I can actually take a soft brush with a black cover and I can completely remove them. The only thing which I would add is some gradient effect on top of the image in order to make sure that the headline is even more visible. So I can add a, a black gradient below my headline and that way I still have the image which is contextual to my torso and they still have a readable headline which is the most important thing and for the body text i can do the same thing but with a new layer with the soft brush with dark colors i can actually start painting below the text in order to make sure that it is readable and it is legible so now after we have added our text as well as our visuals we are pretty much done with our carousel of course the rest is up to you you can customize it as much as you'd want so let's get to the fun part which is saving our carousels and scheduling them now a quick tip before you save your carousels is that you can go into edit 
and you can click the button check spelling and this will actually automatically check the spelling of your whole cover so this has saved me so many times from accidentally misspelling words when i'm typing them in or from copy pasting with bad grammar and again this is something which takes a few seconds as you saw on screen but it can be a complete lifesaver when it comes down to creating content and posting content which is error free so again edit check spelling it can save you a lot of time now after we have checked our spelling we have made sure that our text is awesome our visuals are awesome usually if you have sliced your carousels appropriately the only thing that you need to do after it finishes loading is click the save button and then choose the directory in which you want to save your carousels the next step is pretty straightforward as well you can go into your favorite scheduling app or you can send these files to your smartphone and you can upload them directly to instagram what i personally utilize and recommend to my clients is utilizing creator studio this is an application created by facebook for facebook and instagram what we have to do is click the create post button select instagram feed after we have opened our cursor we can select it if we can click open and it will automatically upload to creator studio in order this is another phenomenal feature of photoshop that when you're saving utilizing save for web and it has been cut in slices previously it actually saves you the first slice as the first file and then the tenth slice as the last file which makes it super easy to then schedule in the right order on Creator Studio or on your phone. And in case that for one reason or another it has issues, you can always rearrange that in Creator Studio by going at this bottom left corner and typing in the correct order of the slide and it will actually flip it for you. Now, if you want to tag somebody in your cursor, you can also do that by clicking the, the tag media button. This will open a new page for the specific slide you've clicked it, you can click it once you can click once again type in your handle select and save after you have done that you can either publish your cursor or click on the on the bottom right corner this will showcase save as draft options as well as scheduling and you can schedule your cursors indefinitely in the future so this is how i create my carousels in photoshop if you have enjoyed this video make sure you smash the like button subscribe to my channel and stay brave